Welcome to the MetPro Method Podcast. I'm your host, Crystal O'Keefe. Today, I am joined by MetPro client, Kenlin Foster, and MetPro coach, Jesse Davis. We are going to be discussing Kenlin's MetPro journey and hear all of her tips for vegetarian and possibly some vegan snacks. I'm very excited. <laughs> Thank you both so much for being here today. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, we're excited. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mentioned snacks, vegetarian snacks to Jesse, and she was like, I have the perfect person. <laughs> she navigates everything. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, it is a journey and it's a challenge sometimes. So um, trying to navigate, eating out, things like that. But snacks, snacks are particularly difficult. Yeah. So let's back up a little bit. Let's set the sure. stage. When when did you start with MetPro? Give the listeners an idea how long you You've been with them and how you decided MetPro was like the solution for you. Okay, sure. So I've always had a passion for health and fitness and I am in not that field, but <laughs> I ended up in the hospital for exertional rhabdomyolysis in 2012 because I was working out too much. Wow. And I decided then and there that I needed to be more educated. So I got my NASM CPT and then I went on and got a fitness nutrition specialization and TRX qualification, and I'm a registered yoga teacher, so I just keep doing this journey. So I had worked with Stronger You, which was a company that you'd featured on the clip out, but way, way before. And then I found Peloton, and then I found the clip out, and then I found you, <laughs> and then I kept listening to Angelo on the clip out. So one day I'm driving somewhere, I'm listening to Angelo, and he's talking about running a marathon and training for a marathon and how your body tries to achieve homeostasis how it doesn't matter that you're running a bazillion miles, your weight's not going to fluctuate that much. And he started talking about carb cycling and calorie restriction. And it was a light bulb moment for me. And I was like, I've got to sign up. So I signed up and I got hooked up with Coach Jesse. And I've been on this journey ever since. It's been fantastic for me as a working professional. I'm sure you both understand. We sometimes skip meals. We don't eat breakfast. We do. We cut corners. We cut things. And so what I found is that I was eating much, much more volume of food on MetPro and losing weight and getting fitter and losing body fat. So it was just a, it was a great, wonderful experience for me to find MetPro. Wow. Kenlin, do you ever like stop moving? No. I feel like between full-time no. job and like all the certifications you just named, you never are still, <laughs> you are never still. I don't <laughs> slow down a whole lot. And it's, I, I think it's probably drives my family insane. So <laughs> I, you get a lot done they though. Love me. They love me. <laughs> I love it. It's all good stuff. <laughs> so Jesse, what's it been like working with Kenlin? That's why her name popped to, to mind immediately when you're looking for somebody because she's A plus. A plus student, especially because she is vegan. So she has the most restrictive, if you will, guidelines. Plus her daughter has a lot of other dietary needs. And so oh. when her daughter's there, now she's in college, um, but you know, back in the day when she was in the house. So just being mindful of all these different things um, that can work. And then again, when you travel, you need non-perishable and you have even more restrictions. And she just was able to find what she needed and she made it work. And it was just a blessing because it's, you have to really pay attention. You have to really stay mindful and you have to make that effort uh, and plan. And she was such a good planner and it paid off. I wanted her to tell her story. No credit to, to coach Jesse, because I, I have learned so much from you as far as other options for eating out. Yes, lots of heart love. And she did the most amazing thing for me. So my daughter has some health issues and she's in college and she ended up in the hospital in December. Oh. All of a sudden, just emergency situation, ended up hospitalized. I left the courthouse, flew up to Chicago, it didn't take anything but you know i don't know my suit it was crazy and jesse like sent snacks to my hotel so oh. i could have i know i know i don't think you <laughs> i forgot about that i forgot about that. you did I you did it was wonderful any way we can help right it's that's right together. that's right that's, that's so right. sweet oh my gosh it was Jesse really is the best gifter. Like yes. she is, she's yes. always very thoughtful <laughs> about people. I am, um, I'm actually uh, very envious of that. She's very good at that. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was lovely. It was lovely. <laughs> so Kinlan, how long have you been 
a vegan. And actually, before you go into that, yes. can you just explain very briefly for people listening the yes. difference between vegetarian and sure. vegan? Because not everybody knows that. Absolutely. So a vegetarian is someone who doesn't eat meat, typically not animal flesh, but would eat eggs, cheese, milk. And a vegan is a type of vegetarian who takes out all animal products. So no dairy, um, no people are surprised at people, but no honey, honey is an animal product. And oh. so there's, there's, yeah, there's no milk, there's no cheese, there's, there's nothing, no eggs. And so it's a little more restrictive, a lot more restrictive. So it's really plants, grains, that's it. I'll be honest. It sounds hard. It sounds really hard. I think I'm too lazy to be vegan. I, I really do. <laughs> you know, once you get into it and get into the groove and, and my reasons for it are, and I've eaten meat in my past. I've been vegetarian where I've had cheese and milk and stuff. And I've been vegan. I've been vegan for about three, four years now, strictly, okay, I'm gonna say strictly dietary vegan. So I have a mother boots right now. So I'm not a lifestyle <laughs> vegan. There are, there are people yeah. there. And, and I'm, you know, it's whatever, it's whatever yeah. floats your boat, right? Yeah. It's yeah. whatever works for you. But there are people yeah. who are very, very strict and they only want to wear non-animal based products. So they don't, don't do leather, whatever, but I'm just a dietary vegan. And it's really just a lifestyle choice for me. Um, as a personal trainer, when I look at meat, I see fascia and ligaments, tendons, and blood vessels and it kind of grosses me out. So that's it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so then when you talk about how it's more restrictive, it definitely mm -hmm. is. What types of snacks do you eat? This is what I hear from vegetarians all the time. And I know that you're vegan, so it's a little bit different, but right. I hear all the time, how am I supposed to like get my macros kind of all straightened out when I'm only I'm eating non-meat products. Right. So it's hard. So, you know, things like egg whites, for example, are great, you know, just protein extras to throw into a shake or scramble up some egg whites. Um, for for me, so, so, so <laughs> Justin's peanut butter packets. Yeah. Justin's peanut butter packets are like a lifesaver. So I buy these by the case. And I have them everywhere. I have them at home. I have them in my gym. I have them in my office. And so rice cakes, apples, um, bananas, when I'm allowed bananas, not bananas right now, but when I'm up. So that, <laughs> missing my bananas. Uh, so that on the Justin's peanut butter on that is fantastic. And that is a great, because it's a fat and a protein. And then we have, you know, the carb with the rice cake, the apple, the banana, whatever dates when i get dates i put a little justin's peanut butter on it um protein packets oh. this is vegan protein powder this is tom brady's and then i also have um this is a garden of life sport so blender bottle and protein packets this is great for traveling so that some almonds um if you're vegetarian like cheese sticks and and the little yogurt packets if they're not sweetened so I did an epic cross country trip with my daughter who graduated from high school in May last year. And so coach Jess and I worked really, really hard on the snacks to take on this epic cross country, seven plus thousand mile journey. Wow. And so dried fruit, dried fruit yeah. was another something that I had never considered, but prunes, which I love. I know people hate prunes, but I love them. I love and prunes. Highly, I know, they're, they're fantastic. Under, they're underrated as far as they I'm are. concerned. They're, they are. They're just a big old raisin. <laughs> they are. They are. You know, there's this whole marketing push. They're dried plums. Well, yes, they're dried plums. So just think dried plums, and they're delicious. <laughs> so uh, so I did, I did some dried fruit. And so the only thing with the dried fruit is you have to look at the carbs and tweak figure out what your carb serving is for your snack. So if it's 20 grams of carbs, look at the serving size of the dried fruit and just make the dried fruit match. And so that is a great way to travel. It's very portable. And I do raw almonds. Like I keep raw almonds everywhere. And just tip 15 to 19 raw almonds is an ounce. So just, I mean, you can just count. You don't have to have your scale with you if you're traveling. So okay. those are some of my great go-to snacks. Jesse, what about when you guys were planning for this epic adventure? What kind of tips did you give Kenlin to help stock up that the RV? Yeah, yeah. I mean, really just looking at those whole whole foods, right? If she's going to be really hungry, make sure she has plenty of vegetables. Uh, it's really fun because when you travel, if you can find the local markets and find, 
you know, the more local, the better, because you can really know where it comes from and it's probably really fresh and it'll last you a little bit on the trip. Now, I can't remember, Kellen, you guys didn't have the RV at this time, right? It was just oh, the no. car. Okay, so that's the car. Space was it was an to... SUV. Yeah, SUV okay, for me and my okay. daughter. And her, my daughter has a medical <laughs> alert service animal. So it was me, my daughter, and the dog. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Because yeah. I remember, I feel like I remember it being a cramped, like, it fun, was. full of love. <laughs> it was. It was great. Very cozy. Um, Everybody was yeah. snuggly. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. she didn't have, like, she couldn't pack everything from the get-go. She was going to have to get stuff on the road. Okay. Um, and so just... You know, being able to find those those fresh, whatever's in season foods, you really can't go wrong with that. So even if you don't have a scale and you can't measure, you know, you, you know that fruits and vegetables are going to be good. And then you've got your peanut butter pouches, right? Mm -hmm. You've got your, your right. minimal things that you packed that can go with it all to balance right. it all out. Yeah. So um, back to the the dried fruits, whichever one of you wants to grab this one. I I love dried <laughs> fruits, but the the thing about those, you said watch the carbs, which I totally agree with. But I think I'm just a cereal snacker. Like, so dried fruits, you have to really watch your serving size with those. Were there any fruits that you had to avoid? Because I feel like most of those have added sugar in them, too. They do. So we, um, and Jess, I don't know if you want to take this, but we stopped. You start. <laughs> okay, I started. Um, yeah, I, I do talk for a living, right? So uh, so I, we stopped. We would find, like, um a decent supermarket if we found a whole foods we would stop there and buy those that didn't have sugar added and i started out with some dried fruits i started out with some dried fruits um, that i knew were no sugar added so that was just being cognizant and then dining out is also you know a, it's not so hard it's not so hard there's almost always a vegetarian option if you're dining out um, for vegans, look for the side item menu and find the stuff that is it laden with butter. And you can just ask, don't put butter on it. And then supplement, I would supplement with protein powder. And um, so I would, I actually just took on my trip, I took a big old jug of <laughs> you know, jar of protein powder and a blender bottle. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you definitely have more freedom when you're in a car. That's one of the main things I talk about with clients is, okay, well, how are we traveling? If we're in a car, yeah, we could take that big jug. You, funny enough, I don't think you can take a big jug like that on an airplane. I think it's no. very suspicious, but you can <laughs> take the individual works. packet. Everything yeah. that's like individual and sealed, like the individual applesauces and the individual peanut butters, you know, it's sealed. And so they really don't have a problem with that. Just put it in the carry on and, and move on. So depending on where you're at in the world and how you're traveling definitely matters on how you pack that protein. But protein's the most important. If anything, that's what Kenlin has learned, especially being vegan. You know, it's really hard to find a, a protein. And so it's easier to get the carbs. So it's not like something that we have to look for. So just being mindful. Do I have my protein? I know I can find a carb when I'm on the go. Right. Thing. But back to the dried fruit. People people that are on MetPro probably are like screaming, I don't see dried fruit on the meal plan. I know <laughs> um, that they again. are. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking very specifically about somebody who's on a travel cross-country road trip for two Plus weeks, right? And so you have to be very realistic in when you're setting your grocery list and your goals and stuff. So yes, if you're sitting at home and you want to munch on something, is dried fruit the best thing to munch on? No, grab fresh fruit. It's going to be more filling. It's going to have more fiber. It's going to have water. It's going to have all these other things that dried fruit doesn't have because it's non-perishable. So just understanding the why behind utilizing it. So dried fruit can be great. In the app, we have raisins because those are the lowest kind of glycemically and they're the most common. So people can find raisins everywhere. We wanna be able to think of food as something we can get anywhere, not processed food that we have to make. It's like, oh, I can go find fresh you know, grapes. Grapes are my favorite because you in the app specifically, it's like 10 grapes, 15 grapes. So I already know I just need to count my grapes. And then, you know, I'll get my little peanut butter pouch. And you're like, boom, didn't even need a scale. And I can eat that on the go. Um, but yeah, so for the, and then the higher glycemic dried fruit would be the ones that you don't want to eat too much of, like the bananas and the mangoes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I love dried mango. Yep, that's pretty much sugar. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's my problem. I love the high glycemic stuff. I love sugar. So when I think dried fruit, I'm like, ooh, dried banana chips. Yummy. And then you count out your 10 and you're like, oh, this I'm is so, I'm so sad. 
<laughs> it's not nearly as satisfying, which no, is it's not. why no, it's I eat, not. eat yes. things like prunes, because that's a lot more satisfying. It uh, is. It is. <laughs> Okay, so you've traveled cross country in a car. You yes. have an RV. Do these mm-hmm. snacks that you take do they do they differ depending on the kind of travel you're doing, uh, or are they kind of the same no matter what? So um, it it differs if I have you know so the snacks like the grapes. The grapes are a great thing. I love grapes for snacks because it's just that you can. You can count them out. It makes them easy. Um, so I'm traveling Sunday, I'm t- flying. So the snacks I'm taking are much more restrictive. So it's going to be um, the peanut butter. I will not buy rice cakes till I get to Dallas. When I get to Dallas, I'm going to you know, go to the closest grocery store and buy my rice cakes. Um, and that's the other thing is having the flexibility if you do to stay in places that have a microwave or have a little mini fridge. So that if you can look as you travel, as you plan to do that, to try to find, um, so I was at a conference a couple of weeks ago and, you know, I had made sure I had a refrigerator and I had my microwave and I got there and I went straight to the grocery store and I bought berries. I love berries and berries are great. I use them for my meal carbs almost every morning for breakfast, but they don't travel well. No. So that would be something I would not take as a snack. Don't take berries. Don't pack them in your suitcase. So the heart of like almonds, peanut butter, um, and and like rice cakes are kind of my go-to for traveling when I'm flying. And I can pack a few rice cakes in my carry-on, but they're gonna get mushy. So you just have to plan and planning is so hard. Yeah. And I mentioned, you know, a little while ago, we're all professional women and we're not only managing our own lives, but we're managing children and spouses and whatever. So it's really, really hard to plan. Um, and that's where my pro has been so helpful to me to say, here are the things you need to go get This is what you need. And then I can say, oh, I can do that. I can follow a list. Coach Jess has been great about providing that. Here here are your parameters, right? Go do these things. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. Now, have you always been a natural planner, Kenlin? Yes. Okay. So, you know, I have a list for today of things to talk about. (laughs) <laughs> that's a that's why she gets her a plus <laughs> yeah that's that's a woman after my heart right there yeah. i'm a planner yeah. myself yeah. so i yes. love it yes. but i yes. but i do find and and maybe jesse you might have some thoughts on this uh i do find that a lot of clients that i talk to planning doesn't come easy to everybody mm-hmm. and so this when we jump in and we start telling them you know you can't necessarily get it be as successful eating like prepackaged foods you really need to go after these whole foods And here's why. And we explain all that. The why makes sense, but it's difficult to change your habits to suddenly get to the store every week if that's not a thing that was happening before. So do either of you have any suggestions on how people can get more in the mindset of planning if that's not something they were good at before? Well, the first thing I would say, if planning is not your forte, don't try to plan every three days. Really try to plan once every two weeks, once every month. So when you set up your game plan, you know that you don't have to do it again for a little bit of time. For example, you're gonna buy your peanut butter pouches, buy two cases of peanut butter pouches, know that you have your pantry full of food for that whole month, no matter what emergency arises. So if you don't have time to plan, you know you have your pantry full. So I would, that's a, non-planners need to have a loaded pantry that's why Amazon allows you to do reoccurring subscription. <laughs> it's like, just get your peanut butter on reoccurring order. It's okay <laughs> if it backs up, you'll eat it. <laughs> uh, you know, and just being able to utilize those tools, right? If you have an Instacart or something, your shopping list really doesn't change very much, right? You have your food items and then, you know, you can even make different food items, travel ones and, you know, regular grocery lists and just click an order and, you know, the amount of planning can be different, but you still have to make that effort. You still have to put it on your books. You have to say, I'm going to spend five minutes to plan, Yeah, whatever that looks like. I'm going to plan and I'm traveling and I'm not going to take my food and I'm going to eat out every day. Okay, that's the plan. So now we can work around that plan. We don't have to feel guilty about it, but what, you know, what is that plan going to look like? Can you bring some peanut butter pouches? So I know you're getting your snack in between these meals that you're eating out. You know, what can we do? <laughs> What a great point. Kenlin, you know, all of the things you've been talking about have been very on plan snacks. Do you have any snacks that you're just kind of like you're still vegan, but there are things that you enjoy that aren't necessarily 100% Met Pro approved? Um, 
Probably, yes. Um, I also <laughs> love cookies. So, you know, um, around the holidays I bake. So sometimes I will add in extra carbs. Around the holidays I was making these pumpkin um, protein shakes that mm. I just, there was too much pumpkin and probably a little <laughs> extra maple syrup in there. So those are, but those are, you know, it was good. Those are kind of things that I like to have. And I, um, I don't know why, but I like, this is so weird. So weird. I'm so sorry to confess this, but I really like vegan margarine. Like I can just eat it by the spoonful. I don't know why. <laughs> don't think I've ever tried Whatever's that. In it. I know it's the weirdest thing ever. My husband thinks I am so bizarre, but so like I could have some extra margarine, vegan margarine spread on some rice cakes or whatever. So that's kind of where I cheat is usually with the vegan margarine. Or like, oh, I get a tablespoon. Well, let me have a little more on my green beans. So that's typically where I cheat. You were probably I, a little weird. light somewhere else it's weird. and i and i like and i love dark chocolate and crystal i think i know you do too oh, so sh- i love dark chocolate. I, I, so well, i keep it in I'm my nightstand what woman doesn't um I but <laughs> i was gonna say what about your s'mores oh i feel like that's her oh, one yes. thing like because you know when yes. people are camping and they travel yes. i mean summer summertime's coming up and you know we don't want to feel guilty so that's mm-hmm. her her she has her yes. you know vegan um S'mores Be- and vegan gluten, s'mores, right? Yeah, vegan. vegan well, I do, I do vegan graham crackers, so no honey in the graham crackers, okay, okay. and then vegan marshmallows because the ones you buy at the store have gelatin. Ugh. Okay, okay. So I don't like gelatin, um, and never have. Like I just, ugh. but anyway, so that and then dark chocolate. So don't do the Hershey's because Hershey's had even the Hershey's Solid special dark. dark has milk in it. So you have to look and really be careful. A lot of dark chocolates still have dairy or whey. So I look and, and, and I have an issue with dairy. That's, that's part of the reason that I don't do dairy is I, I can't, I can't do dairy. So do yeah. you, do you get all those ingredients like from um, Whole Foods? Is that a Whole Foods type of it's, grocery it's a Whole Foods type of thing. Absolutely. <laughs> Whole Foods, go to Whole Foods or Amazon has it. If okay. you can't find it, your local Whole Foods. I can remember. And she bought an extra big bag of the marshmallows last I, summer. Like that's what I remember. <laughs> I did. I divided and sent half to my daughter, who's also <laughs> vegan. So, so my daughter in Chicago, and she's in college. So I sent half to her. And so I am. I have to say, as a traditional Midwesterner, I get overwhelmed when I walk into Whole Foods. I'm like, what is happening in here? There's so many products I don't. I don't recognize. I don't understand. They just like all of the sites overwhelm me. I feel like it's it's just really intense in there. And it is. And and I don't I don't do a lot of analogs. I don't do meat analogs. I don't do cheese analogs. I just don't do those things. I don't like them. If that's what floats your boat, do it. If you want to eat lower on the food chain and do that, do it. It's whatever works for you. For me, my you know, my family calls my food really, really bland. It is. I guess it may be to some people. To me, it's absolutely delicious. My palate's so clean. So, I mean, I'll have steamed brown rice and steamed veggies and my vegan margarine. But, you know, that's, I mean, that's my, (laughs) got to have the vegan margarine. But that's, you know, that's my thing. That's my thing. I love the veggies. I love fresh berries. I love the fresh food. And I think once you get away from a lot of processed foods, and that's the problem with vegan meat and cheese analogs, you know, those replacement products, is that they're so processed. Mm-hmm. They're so full of fat with little little protein value. So not having those things in your diet. Um, but, but going back to what Coach Jess said about planning, so don't try to plan, like she said, don't try to plan every few days. So for me, when I started with Mepro, it was like, I was overwhelmed. I was trying to do all these fabulous veggies and things. And she said, stop, just do pick your grain, pick your veggies and stick to that for a week. And I am a planner, so that was fine. And so I was like, oh, okay. So I'm having brown rice every lunch, you know, and every dinner for a week. And that's fine with me. I don't need to mix it up. I know some people do. And so if you do, you know, make some, I don't know, barley groats, farro, something else. So quinoa, (laughs) whatever you want. Yeah. And then yeah, the big options. cheap hands, <laughs> cheap hands of veggies. And I will go. And so when I'm in a pinch, I'll go to the grocery store and buy the pre-cut, like the pre-cut butternut squash and the pre-cut whatever. And I just spread them in a pan 
and pop them in the oven and roast them. And Coach Jesse sent me at the beginning of this journey, sent me all these fabulous Trader Joe's spices. And so I'll say, oh, this is a good chili lime thing. And this will be great with this other spice. And so we do that, pop them in, and then I have the veggies for the week. And so I can add, you know, if I want mushrooms and I want onions and if I want um, my butternut squash or if I want Brussels sprouts, I've got all those things ready to go for the week. Oh, I love that. So many great Mm -hmm. tips. Okay. You talked a lot about um, how to add carbs into your snacks. Do you have any tips on if you need a snack that's on the low carb end of things? But you've got your your peanut butter, maybe your Justin's peanut Mm -hmm. butter packet. How are you going to keep that low carb? Just eat less of whatever you're eating? It's typically that. I don't just help me here. Like the (laughs) applesauce is a is a good is a good one one because single like a, simple snack like a single because that's that's mm-hmm. it's it says it's a half a cup on the package it really measures out to like just mm-hmm. under a half a cup <laughs> and so that's a really good easy thing and also so i get up mm-hmm. really really early i get up at 4 30 to work out so i can't eat very much before i work out because i just don't feel like it so the applesauce like a little applesauce before i get on the peloton or the tonal or whatever that i'm doing so um, treadmill, whatever it is, it's, you know, that, that doesn't make my stomach upset. Okay. So I think applesauce, I don't know what else, what else do we do that's low carb? That's really, really low carb. Um, well, yeah, I mean, basically we always have a little bit of carb at snacks. So that's yes. the, that's the one important thing. I do. Um, yeah. I would, I was going to ask you, do you, cause I can't think of any that you've actually asked me and I was looking through photos that, you know, you've sent me of approved items. Um, but a bar, do you have a bar that you have, that you go to that has like a protein bar or, you know, something like that, Kenlin, or you don't usually do I I used to use the garden of life sport protein bars. Um, they have really, really high protein, but their carbs are still a little on the high side, but those are great. Also. I mean, if you're traveling and you need a snack and you're at a pinch, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather have that. Mm-hmm. Then go out here and look in the vending machine in the hallway. For sure. <laughs> Don't yeah. go to the vending yeah. machine, guys. It's, it's dangerous it's out there. It's a whole other podcast. <laughs> For real. If you're already Absolutely. hungry, do not go near a vending machine. Gonna, it is not going to end well. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. And um, here was one other thing I thought about is um, the Achille bread. Yes. Because that will pop up on my meal carbs for my snacks. And um, so I actually keep a loaf of Ezekiel bread here in the, in the courthouse and one at home. And so if I'm, I don't do it very often, but if I need some carb and I've realized I don't have my apple, I don't have my whatever, I, I'm pretty well stocked, but if I don't have it, cause I'm a planner, right? <laughs> but if I don't have it, um, it's, it's frozen. So it stays in the freezer. You can pop one out. We have a toaster oven. It works. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. It's like a backup to the plan. So you've right. got, you are still going to be covered. I love that. Plan A through Z. <laughs> that's right. I was just going to say that is something we talk about. Not only do we need to have a plan A, but we got to have at least a B and most likely we need a C. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> okay. Back up, back up. So, um, all right. Is there anything else that we should cover about vegetarian or vegan snacks that we haven't already? I, I think that, Yes, there is actually. So if you're traveling and if you're traveling by car or you're pulling your your new RV, you (laughs) can stop at a gas station. So now lots of gas stations have fresh fruit. So like don't go in and buy the Oreos, which you can also have if you're vegan, but um, because they're vegan, but but buy bananas, buy apples, buy the fruit. And if you're really, really in a pinch and you can't find something that hits your macros exactly, still choose the more whole foods, right? Coach Jesse, right? Choose the more whole foods. That's right. That's right. I mean, I feel like at any gas station, they usually have almonds or peanuts, and we know those are the highest protein nuts. So find one of those, and then if they have fresh fruit, great. And if they don't, at least you have something with the nuts. At least you've Mm -hmm. gotten your body some sort of fuel. And then really on the road and traveling, especially if you're in the RV, because I could just think, Um, You know, you're trying to get to your destination and you don't have your snack. And now now our blood sugar is starting to tank. And so now we're more likely to not make that right choice. So stop early. Be proactive. So when you stop at the gas station to get gas, even if it's not snack time, think ahead, right? That planning and being like, oh, I know that we need to get, you know, whatever you have. But you got to you got to plan ahead. That's the key. 
fuel, fuel your body as well as the vehicle. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. And the eating more frequently, I think also when you eat really clean and yeah. you eat vegan foods, they don't hold you as long. So eating every couple of hours. So I'm on right now, the plan I'm on, I'm getting breakfast in the morning and after and snack, lunch and dinner. So, and that works really, really well for me um, just because it's like, I don't know. It's like babies and formula, you know, or breastfeeding, it's like you know, like every two hours, right? I need it to like that's how our bodies are made. They're not mm-hmm. made to go long bouts without food. <laughs> what about? Um, is there anything that you would like to share about your MetPro journey in general? And and that's for either of you, Jesse, working with Kenlin, Kenlin working with Coach Jesse, that you haven't already shared. God love her because she's been through some ups and downs with me. Like she'll send me like, I've had some like family issues recently. And so she'll send me some text. She's like, you haven't logged anything today. I was like, I can't eat because I'm so sick at my stomach because you know, they're whatever. But so she's become a really good friend and very supportive, very supportive. Like I said, when my daughter had her emergency, I mean, like the next thing I knew I had snacks at my hotel and just very thoughtful and sweet. And so I've been delighted with Met Pro. I would love to sign my whole stuff up for MetPro. Um, I can't afford it, but you know, I'd love to, I'd love to. So, and my whole family, um, it'd be great. But we, I think we've done really well together for the last couple of years. It's been a good journey. And I have really found, I mean, I thought I was a healthy eater before, but I have really found myself um, just my body feels amazing. I celebrated my 55th birthday last week and I feel great and I'm, you know, just, I feel fantastic. And I think a lot of it's my nutrition. Well, you look fantastic. And she's eating all the time. That's like the key to everything, right? It's just like the secret was not eating less or, you know. It was eating eating more and eating more more frequently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yes, no, it's been a, it has been such a fun journey to, to travel. And I think that she hit it on the nose when she said, you know, the ups and downs, every single one of us has ups and downs, right? And so really, I believe what my job is as a coach is to get you through those ups and downs, make sure that you don't stay down, <laughs> right? We're, we're all going to get down. So just get back up. Um, and I, I applaud Kenlin for fighting through everything and persevering and Look at her now. She's, you know, feeling at the top of her game at 55. Right. That's right. You know? Yeah. She's not going to let those hormones get her down. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. And I have to tell you, Kenling, Coach Jesse is just great at uh, it. She cheers on all of us coaches. She's She supports all of us. I think she's just oh, a good. natural support system. <laughs> I'm so glad. That's good. Just a little love I fest love here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hey, like we women need to support forward, each other. Right? Oh, we need we to do. support each other. That's right. That's right. We do. We gotta we gotta make sure those around us are um this, you know, same uplifted, finding that positive positive energy. I know Kenlin cause cause she can't hire me for everyone. Um <laughs> she uses my wisdom and she does pay it forward, right? She's got her little gym that she's starting up and how many weeks has it been operational now? <laughs> it, well, it got finished Friday. So, okay. um, so we, we, uh, we took a, do you want to hear this? Of do course. This? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so there's this, so I'm in the courthouse. It's, it's really old and they built a justice center. It's a long story. You can edit out whatever you need to, but they built a justice center about 15 years ago and they moved the jail. So they took the old jail that was at the courthouse and made it a juvenile detention facility. And that's what I do. I do kids. I do all the kids. I'm the only judge that's here at the courthouse. And I have two magistrate judges that work under me and I have a staff. So there was an old juvenile detention facility. They used as shelter care for like runaways and, and it's got three bedrooms and it's, three jail cells. It's really nasty. So it's been sitting vacant because it's not up to code for the, our department of children's services. So what I wanted is I wanted to go run in the park, which you can see out my window sort of at lunch or go walk in the park, but I needed to shower. So I called the sheriff said, Hey, sheriff, can I use your old defunct detention shower? He says, Yes, sure. And then I said, well, hey, look, I'd really like to stretch. And you've got that old day room. And could I use that to stretch? And he said, yeah. I said, and if I wanted to teach my my yoga to some of my staff, could I do it there? And he said, sure. And I said, and if I want to bring him some equipment, would you be okay with that? And he said, judge, you can do whatever you want to with that room. And I said, okay. So I took that little inch he gave me 
the full mile and maybe more. <laughs> and so I put down rubber. This I've done all this in the last month, month and a half. So rubber flooring, uh, commercial gym, rubber flooring. Re, like I repainted, and I have to say, this is all of my own money and my okay. elbow grease. There's no county funds expended for anybody who's listening. No county funds. <laughs> no county funds. So, but like after hours painting, my my two magistrate judges they did the painting. They repainted the whole room. Um, I scrubbed that bathroom. It was disgusting, but I scrubbed it. It's got a little kitchen in there. We put down the flooring. I called, I got a commercial Peloton. I got a light commercial treadmill. I put in a T-Rex multi-mount with T-Rex. I got a half rack of weights, a weight bench. Um, I've taught yoga classes down there to my staff. So anyway, I gave my staff, Love it's it. on my own nickel, but my staff has access to the commercial Peloton so they can all get on the Peloton. And a lot of them have in the last, we got the Peloton a couple of weeks ago. Ooh, so we started our, we got it like right before, I think the Friday before March. And so then my magistrate judge and I started that crazy challenge and he's eight years younger and he's much fitter and he's killing me, <laughs> but I'm clinging on by my fingernails because I'm gonna win. <laughs> That is truly incredible. Keep on fighting. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. Cool so, that is so cool we're story. so excited. So, yeah, I've been I've been doing I did like a chair yoga for my staff uh, last week and some meditation, and we're loving it. And I've got people. I've got two employees who are um, actually both scheduled for hip replacement surgery, but they've been getting on the Peloton. Wow. Oh, nice. And moving and moving because movement is medicine, as we all know. Yeah. And yeah. Um, there's change in action. There is change yep, in action. Yep. And it really is just the smallest little thing, right? This started with just needing a shower. And then I just mm -hmm. wanted a little bit of space to stretch, right? right? And so, right. you know, just planting the seed for all you out there that, you know, need a little better work environment or or don't have time to go to a gym and you don't have at home, you can't do it because you have 5 million kids. <laughs> you know, the work is a good place to do it. So I love that you're doing that, Kenlin. That makes me so proud Thank of you. you. Yeah. It looks fantastic. I'm going to send you pictures, Jess. I'll send you pictures. Okay. Yeah. yeah so you get good. a chance, Kenlin, send me a picture. We could include it I'm, with your um your episode when it goes up. That'd be cool. Fantastic. I will. Cool. I will. All right. Anything else it. you guys want to add before before I wrap up? No. no, just other than this has been so fun. I've been a fan for so long. Oh. So I'm just <laughs> delighted to to be in your presence. It. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're, you're I'm so glad so I thought of you too. <laughs> You're so sweet. Wow. I need to talk to Kenlin every day when I'm having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank right. you both so much for your time. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you. And listeners, Absolutely. that's all for this week. You can find all the MetPro Method episodes anywhere you get podcasts, or you can go to metpro.co slash podcast. Please be sure to follow the show and rate and review. That lets other people know what they can expect. You can also learn more about MetPro at metpro.co. I'm your host, Crystal O'Keefe, and I will be back next week. Until then, remember, consistency is key.